All right. Good morning. Uh, thank you for being here. Today, we have the most important session to start out the day, the session about cancer. So the wave is coming. Um, it is unstoppable and undeniable. Whether we're ready for it or not, here it comes. Not only are cancer and cardiovascular diseases going to be some of the biggest killers in high-income countries, as pictured in this graph on the bottom line, there'll be major killers in low- and middle-income countries, where 85% of the world's population lives. We do have new therapies. Um, I think almost everybody in the room has heard about immunotherapy, and almost everybody in the room is excited about immunotherapies. But we must do better. Um, for those of you who aren't familiar with this graph, this is actually a graph from the New England Journal of Medicine paper that came out in 2010 describing the first immunotherapy, an anti-CTLA-4 antibody called ipilimumab. And what you can see is that the red arrow is the mortality of patients not treated with IPI. That orange arrow points to the line of patients treated with IPI. Not that much better. Okay, we're talking about modest improvements in overall survival. And so while this is promising, we've got to bring that curve up. Not only do we need to bring that curve up for patients in high-income countries who can afford these types of therapies that cost anywhere between hundreds of thousands to a million dollars, we also need to bring these improvements to the rest of the world, where patients pay fee-for-service. This is from the Lagos University Teaching Hospital in Nigeria. Um, and where access to curative therapies like radiation therapy are extremely limited. The country of Nigeria, which has a population half of our own, has one working linear accelerator. Medical records, a major issue that you heard about yesterday, recalling that while we have digital medical records and these are challenges, much of the world actually follows patients with records that look like this. And so these are opportunities to actually build from the ground up. So yesterday, you heard quite a bit about how big data and analytic approaches can be used to improve the accuracy of cancer diagnosis, to improve the speed with which we diagnose our patients. Today, in our session, we'll hear about how we can use big data to identify new targets for our drugs, improve the efficacy of the drugs that we already have. Um, in our own laboratory, we're interested in how we can modify the microbiome to actually improve the efficacy of drugs we have. And finally, ways that we can predict treatment response. Of course, all of this is only important if we can actually deliver the right diagnosis, the right drugs, to the right patients at the right time. So join me in welcoming Inakshi Singh. She's a senior product specialist at SAP, Connected Health Team. In this role, she works for a multidisciplinary teams to develop software solutions for real-time analyses of large-scale biological, wearable, and clinical data. She has collaborated with leading research institutions and contributed to the development of SAP solutions that enable precision medicine. In her spare time, Inakshi enjoys staying up to date on the latest scientific literature, sounds like fun, and technological advances. In 2015, the American Society of Clinical Oncology announced a strategic technology collaboration between SAP and their new CancerLink program. And so join me in welcoming Inakshi. Good morning, everyone. I'm very grateful to be here and represent SAP. Um, before getting into SAP Health, I just wanted to ask a question. How many people know what SAP does? Okay, like 10%. Um, I'll give you a little story about SAP before getting into SAP Health. Uh, SAP was founded by five guys. They were, the story goes, they were working at IBM. They wanted to build an enterprise resource planning software. IBM shut that project down, so they built SAP. Today, SAP is a global company with 85,000 employees. Uh, we have 20 million users of our software, and uh, we build the best market-leading business management software. So what that means is software think for, to run businesses of all sizes, including HR, accounting, finance, et cetera. Uh, we have software for 25 industries in 193 countries. So needless to say, SAP is a pretty big company. Um, about 10 years ago or so, SAP began developing a database called SAP HANA. Uh, in essence, it 
can analyze big data really fast. It's transformed SAP's core business and was sort of the catalyst that led to the SAP Health organization. Um, so SAP Health uh, was created as a business unit about a year ago. Uh, we have about 250 employees globally, and the basis of SAP Health is our SAP HANA technology, and which we've used it to apply um, it to analyze big data, such as cancer data. So um, Ami mentioned the collaboration with CancerLink. Um, that's one of our flagship partnerships in the United States. So for those of you who are not familiar, the American Society of Clinical Oncology is a network of clinics and practices that treat oncology patients across the nation. They have about 80 or so practices and about 40,000 oncologists that are members of ASCO. Uh, the goal of CancerLink, which is an independent subsidiary operated by ASCO, is um, their vision was to integrate the clinical data across all of the practices that are members of ASCO, put it into one system, and provide uh, front end for researchers to analyze this data, as well as uh, quality tracking and measuring. So the link actually stands for Learning Information Network for Quality. So CancerLink was built by SAP. So we have we've built the technology underneath. It's live today. It's being used by about 2,000 oncologists. It's continuing to grow. And we have about 2 million patient records in the system today. 2 million, just in case you hadn't heard that. Um, so I talked about clinical data. Um, and of course, we have clinical data from the EHR system, much of that data is unstructured, right? So we've taken the clinical data that is the structured form, integrated that into our data warehouse with the SAP Health platform, um, but we also have created a text analysis pipeline to process and um, unstructured data in the form of doctor's letters or pathology notes. Um, the text analysis feature is actually a part of SAP HANA. So um, HANA comes with a natural language processing engine, which we've leveraged and built and fine-tuned for healthcare. Um, so what that looks like, this is sort of an example of what it might look like for a doctor's letter. Um, so you'll see the entities that are extracted. Um, you'll see diagnostic procedure has been highlighted in green, and automatically uh, the associated ontology code is added to that. And so in that way, we can harmonize and integrate unstructured data with structured data so that we can now deliver or enable researchers and physicians to research and analyze that data in conjunction. Uh, the ontology services and text analysis feature of the SAP Health platform is customizable. So in this case, we're using the NCI method thesaurus ontology, but we can uh, plug in additional ontologies as necessary. Um, so I talked about the data that's integrated in CancerLink, but how are researchers and physicians using that today? So there's two main portals in which um, CancerLink provides the data for um, its members. The first is of course, for clinical research. So this is a screenshot, not of CancerLink, because I can't show you that, but this is a, just a demo system of our application for clinical research. Um, if you look at the landing page, you'll see about 100,000 patients. The patient count is on the top right. Um, sorted by ICD code, so inter using the inter international classification of diseases. On the left-hand side, we have these filter cards, which will allow you to filter and slice and dice the data in however you want. So for example, you might be interested in lung cancer, a specific biomarker expression and some chemotherapy regimen. In three clicks, you can filter down your patient set to create that cohort that you're interested in. You can calculate Kaplan-Meier estimations on the fly and compare survival rates, and um, you can go down to the individual patient level. So in CancerLink's case, um, the researchers will have access to the de-identified network of two million patient records, uh, but if a physician wants to drill down to an individual patient, you can only see this patient summary if you have access to that patient, right? So um, in this case, we can look at a chronological view of all of the interactions that have um, have been uh, interacted with the patient and the doctor. And so with this application, we can go from the population level down to the individual in just a few clicks, all visually without having to touch any code. The, so I mentioned earlier that uh, Cancer Link, the link stands for the Learning Information Network for Quality. And so the original intent of CancerLink was to enable the tracking of process and outcome measures in order to compare how 
or benchmark certain KPIs between clinics or within physicians in the same clinic. And so as a result, we're building this SAP um, health clinical quality solution. It's still in development, but it's been um, developed very closely with ASCO and the oncologists that are members of CancerLink. So as a clinician, I can log into this application and take a look at the measures that are associated with my practice. Um, and I can see that, for example, with the colorectal cancer screening on the right, I'm at 59% of my goal of 79%. Um, in this situation, normally, um, I would be looking at these uh, measures after the fact. In this application, it's perspective and actionable, so we have 16 patients that I can still act on as a clinician to, in order to improve my goal. So as we go to quality-based uh, metrics or to pay for performance models, we can use this application to help improve quality scores, track the, effic the efficacy of care, and improve um, the metrics in which certain clinics are uh, compared against another. So with this application, we're of course also working on an integration with the EMR system. And so if I am logged in as a clinician in my EMR, I will see this pop up if I click on the quality SAP button and I'll see my patient and the associated measures that are related to that patient and I can decide whether I wanna make, act on that, change it or defer it for later. And so these are the two main solutions that CancerLink are using using daily, but um, also available for any other partners and customers with SAP. Uh, the other thing that I would like to mention is a le recent partnership with Startup Health. So Startup Health is a global entrepreneurship development company. They have, uh, they call them health transformers. So they have about 400 plus entrepreneurs they've invested in and a huge ecosystem across the world and tracking about 7,500 startups globally with about 25 billion invested in funding. So recently, SAP Health and Startup Health announced a partnership. SAP is investing in a innovation fund for uh, the startup health ecosystem. What that means is we are looking for about 15 digital health companies that can be added to the SAP health ecosystem. We would give the startup access to SAP tools like SAP HANA and, and additional SAP health solutions. And uh, the idea is we want to help transform health through our partner ecosystem. So if anyone is interested in this, in this opportunity, uh, please keep an eye out on the Startup Health website. Applications for these digital health companies will be coming out soon. So I just wanted to end with our vision for SAP Health. I sort of gave you just a quick overview of the solution specific for CancerLink that we've built, but the idea of SAP Health and what we envision is enabling a data, federated data infrastructure with the patient in the middle. We want to simplify the data flow between the healthcare stakeholders across the continuum, so not just providers, but also pharma life sciences. The ownership of the data remains with whomever owns that data. SAP does not intend to own any of that, but we just want to help simplify uh, the data flow and the data exchange between the stakeholders in order to um, help enable the future of healthcare. And so with that, I thank you all for your time and look forward to the question and answer period.